Well, welcome back to uh, another episode of Chemistry, It Is All That Matters, and today we're going to look at atoms, but we're going to look at how to count the subatomic particles to determine how many protons, neutrons, and electrons are found within the atom. Let's do a quick reminder of the information that we can find on our periodic table. So if we go to any element on the periodic table, we are reminded that the number in the top center, that is the atomic number, and the atomic number defines the atom, defines the element, and the atomic number determines the number of protons. So the number of protons never changes. Every carbon atom will have six protons. A nitrogen atom will have seven. If a nitrogen atom lost one of those protons, it would no longer be nitrogen. It would be uh, carbon. So six, the atomic number for carbon, is the defining uh, point in that carbon molecule or carbon atom, and that is six protons. Now we have the symbol in the center, always a capital letter. If there are two letters, it's always capital lowercase, uh, as in chlorine, capital C, lowercase l. Uh, the element name, and then below the element name, we have the atomic mass. Now the atomic mass unit, it's actually the average mass of the carbon on Earth, and that average mass is based on several things, but we'll talk about that in another episode. But typically round off to the whole number, and protons plus neutrons will equal the atomic mass. So for carbon, we would round the 12.01 to 12. Since there are six protons based on the atomic number, that would mean we would need six neutrons. Um, the state of matter, again, in the lower left-hand corner, has nothing to do with the subatomic particles, and the number on the very bottom is called the electronegativity, which we will go into at another point in time. Now, one of the other ways that we represent atoms or elements is we put them in this symbol here, where you use the symbol as a capital letter, and then you have a superscript, um, which would be the mass number, uh, which is called the A number, and then the atomic number is referred to as the Z number, and it's usually mass number on top, atomic number on the bottom, and the symbol to the right. So an example of that would look like this, where we have the element symbol Na for sodium. The mass number would be superscripted, 22.99, and the atomic number is 11. Remember that 22.99 would be rounded to 23. So in order to count the number of protons in an element, that is the atomic number. The atomic number determines what element we're dealing with because it is the count of the protons in the atom. So atomic number equals protons. Now the atomic mass unit, the AMU, is determined by a combination of the protons and neutrons. If we remember, we have three subatomic particles, the protons and neutrons found in the nucleus, and the electrons which orbit in orbital clouds around that nucleus. The electrons are so light, have very uh, minimal mass, so therefore they are not included in the atomic mass unit. So protons plus neutrons housed in the nucleus equal the atomic mass unit. So uh, an example would be carbon again having a mass of 12, 6 protons, 6 neutrons, 6 plus 6 being 12. So sodium, going back to that symbol we showed you a little earlier, sodium Na, atomic number 11, would have 11 protons. The atomic mass gives us an atomic mass unit of 23. Since protons plus neutrons equal the atomic mass unit, that means 23 minus 11 gives us 12 neutrons. So sodium would have 11 protons, 12 neutrons. Now typically in an atom, the electrons and protons have to be equal because we have balanced charges. Protons being positive, electrons being negative, the atom being neutral, the protons have to equal the electrons. So the number of protons equal the number of electrons, so the atomic number also equals the number of electrons. Now later we will discuss ions which are charged 
atoms, atoms that have a positive or negative charge, and in that case, you would not have an equal number of protons and electrons, and we'll go over that in another video. So here we have three more examples. We have 1608, 16 being the atomic mass, 8 being the atomic number, O is the symbol for oxygen. So the 8 being the atomic number tells us we have 8 protons. The mass is 16, so 16 minus 8 tells us we have 8 neutrons. And because these are neutral atoms, protons equal electrons, therefore we have 8 electrons. For phosphorus, we have a 31 and a 15. 31 for the atomic mass unit, 15 for the atomic number. Atomic number tells us the number of protons, so we have 15 protons. 31 minus 15 gives us the neutron value, so we have 16 neutrons. And being a neutral atom, the protons and electrons are equal, so we also have 15 electrons. For zinc, the atomic mass unit is 65, and the atomic number is 30. 65 minus 30 tells us the neutron value is 35. The proton number is the same as the atomic number, 30 protons. And because this is a neutral atom, we have 30 electrons. So here we have a table for practice in counting the subatomic particles based on various uh, bits of information. So in this case, um, you have this PDF available on the SOFIA tutorial. So if you'd like to, you can go ahead and print that out and fill it in. Or you can simply pause the video and go through this mentally, making sure you have filled in each of the empty spaces on the chart. Uh, turn off the video now, go ahead and complete the chart, and when you're done, so here we have the completed chart and go ahead and check through to make sure you have all of the uh, correct numbers in each of the empty spaces in the chart. If you have any questions, be sure to review this video and we will have more practice of this on the next video.